Hi, this is Lindwolf playing games while rumbling incoherently into a microphone. Why? Well, just because I can, and I just continue with Still Life 2, blind. Now, I'm apparently playing now as the reporter, uh, who has just been kidnapped by the serial killer. But before I continue with dialogue, I... Mm, I have a couple of things to say. First of all, uh, I'm a bit salty that I never got the chance to check out other things at the police database um, before, because I chose the one with uh, Beatrice Allen's uh, son and then the cutscenes started playing on their own. Uh, but second, it's a bit weird how there's a three year time jump. Uh, what was she doing in those three years? Uh, it seems to me that the, the revelation that her own boyfriend is the grandson of the woman who took care of Ackerman in the asylum and is also painted on one of his paintings is a pretty significant kind of development. Uh, so I'm not sure why the game skipped over that three years into the future. And finally, it's a bit weird to me how Victoria is working for the FBI again. Uh, because that makes her quitting uh, kind of pointless and stupid. Uh, and also, wouldn't it be pretty hard to get rehired once you quit and throw your badge in your boss's face? Like, that doesn't strike me as something that would endear mm, the people uh, you know, in, in the command structure to you when you came back three years later and asked to be rehired. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's kind of weird. Uh, let's continue with the game. Do you recognize this place? This is where the actresses immortalized in my videos made their debuts and bid their adieus. I love this room. It holds so many delicious memories. Well, <laughs> for me at least. Listen, I don't know what you intend to do. Maybe we can make a deal? I doubt that. I want to do away with those who are tracking me. Their interference doesn't amuse me anymore. You are one of those people, Hernandez. You are the one who dubbed me the East Coast Killer. It's time you understand what really lies behind those meaningless words. I know who your informant is. The former FBI agent, James Hawker. He's going to die just like you. Of course, I'll be much quicker with him. He doesn't have your charm. Please, I'm begging you. Let me go. I won't tell anyone what's happened. You're right about that hot stuff. I went to a lot of trouble to get you here, and now you'd like me to give up all my lovely plans? You know me well enough to know that I take everything to its proper finish, and sometimes even a little beyond that. I have to leave you for the moment. I have a few things to arrange to take care of your friend Hawker. See you very soon. Gorgeous. Okay, it's pretty weird that he didn't Don't like panic. I have to get out of here or find a way to call for help. Th that he didn't tie me down or anything. Uh, but then again, you know, serial killers are not known for their uh, for their uh, flawless displays of logic. This sickos put up cameras everywhere. Mm, okay, nail, nail file. Can I let go of things? Not, not easily. Because, you know, I, I seem to have limited inventory on a grid, so what if I want to pick up something that's bigger than what I have left? Like, how can I 
throw out things, combine, separate. The collar is locked around my neck. It's impossible to remove it. Yeah, for example, the, the mattress would take up all of my inventory. It's not turning on. Looks like there's no power. This cable is connected to an electrical outlet and won't come out. I've got to pull it out. I'm not touching this. I'm not touching this. But you just did. This entryway is not just here for decoration. The darn color shocks me when I try to go through the entryway. Okay. Uh, I can presumably tamper with it somehow. <laughs> ah, okay. I can store things in here. I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, I really can't go far. Let's put this in here, because I assume the mattress is used for something, right? Although, would anything come of trying to combine those? What? I didn't even move in this direction. I'm not quite sure what's happening with the shocks. I was nowhere near the boundary for that. Clearly, the, the, the mattress has to be used for something, right? Otherwise, m m maybe there's something underneath it? I'm not touching this. There's a plate screwed onto the entryway. It's screwed shut. Hmm. Okay, maybe I can use the nail file uh, to unscrew it.
A circuit board. Seems to be working. For now. A circuit board. Seems to be working. For now. Hmm. This is not interactable. Okay, this is very, very, this is the detection of where even I am, uh, you know, spatially wise, uh, is not particularly great. Can I take a look at the uh, at the stove at least without closing in? Can't. Uh, however, can I dismantle any of the others? This entryway is not just here for decoration. This entryway. This. En hmm. This entry. This. En Seemingly, I can't, which is interesting. Oh, come on! Okay, this is starting to be a little bit annoying. Mm, how? Because I'm not, e not walking anywhere close by. This entryway is not just here for decoration. Um, okay, anything? I probably can't. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I need to somehow stop the detection. Like you know, you know, set it out, uh, 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 set it upright. Hmm. Why can't I do that? It seems stupid. Uh, set set it upright, right in front of it or something. Nope. A circuit board seems to be working for now. Mm. A circuit board seems to be working for now. <laughs> okay, can 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 close in or any on any of this due to the This entryway is not just here for decoration. Yeah, and seemingly I cannot tamper with this uh, despite the fact that mm, It seems to be the same build as the other thing.
Oh, but there's an outlet. Mm, the light switch. Okay, maybe I can use this to sort of reach past, uh, you know, basically use it as an extension of my head to, to manipulate things that are outside of my effective range. This, this, this didn't work. Uh, although, although, to be honest, sticking a metal antenna into the power outlet uh, would be a good way to escape if you had a particular type of escape in mind. That would be kind of, you know, f final uh, as far as escapes go. Um, Okay, what did I enable uh, outside of a lamp? <laughs> can't manipulate this. And I still, yeah, I still can't. So what's the point in... Uh, what's the point... There was also like an like an engine sound. Wait, what? But how, how is that? How is that directly linked? Why does it? What does it change if I? T t turned on the lights beforehand. If if connecting this, uh, you know, unprotected cable to this was enough to sort of short circuit it, what difference does it make uh, if the light was on? Like that's kind of weird. This looks really solid, and I can't pry these boards off barehanded. It looks like an old wedding dress. I'd rather not know what it's doing here. There's something in the stove. A half-burnt flyer. It's an ad for a Holton hardware store. Can't I take it? A half-burnt... Okay, I, hardly, I can't, but I can take a poker. Which maybe that would work for prying the an electrical outlet? It seems to be working. There's a lock. It's high, but I should be able to get out through there. Okay. Uh, well, I, I guess at this point, concealing the camera doesn't matter because uh, a half brain dead person could figure out that at this point I escaped through the window. So. It's high, but I should be able to get out through there. So what's exactly stopping you? Ah, maybe now I can use the mattress, like throw it out the window first, uh, so that my fall is cushioned. Ah. 
No, but I wanted the other things. Okay, I guess I'm not going to have them. I just escaped from here, so walking in through the front door again doesn't strike me as the wisest decision. But I am going to try anyway, because this is the game, and I want to explore. Locked. So the fence is electrified. And probably this as well. That's my phone on the front seat. I have to get it. Locked. Okay, let's store the ladder in here for now, and maybe I can use the the wooden beam to like uh, to, to to break the window in the car and get my phone. This piece of wood looks like a railway tie. It's marked with the letters B A R. This piece of wood looks like a railway tie. It's marked with the letters B A R. Oh wait, but I'm, I'm pretty sure the game allowed me to pick it up. It displayed like the displayed displayed the words wooden beam and then Demolish. Apparently, I, c I have a, I have a skill called demolish. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it displayed even like the number of the. Oh, I guess it, it is a different wooden beam. It's one of the those that are underneath here. Okay, can't use it to break the window, which is weird to There's me. There's a lock. Oh, again, it, uh, the, the targeting was just clunky. No key in the ignition. That'd be too easy. At least I have my phone. Damn, the battery's dead. Hmm, but there's a key for something else, which might be a key for the locker in the back. Indeed. A charger and dictaphone. Uh, some My purse. Empty, of course. Receipts issued by a gas station in St. George, Quebec. And you can combine items. Okay, so combine this with this. No? Well, I, I guess I don't have a, s uh, a power My purse. Source. Empty, of course. Like I would need an actual power outlet or something to connect it so that I could charge the things. C 
can I climb back? Like, to use the outlet? That's a bit stupid, but still, let's, let's try it. <laughs> Actually, I can. That's hilarious to me, especially because this part is on camera, so... This can't possibly work. Why not, actually? What's so wrong with that? Bad idea. Actually, that strikes me as a supreme idea. To at least charge the dictaphone. Which I, I it specifically Bad says idea. I have a charger for it, so... What's like maybe I can if it's the same kind of um, plug maybe maybe I can separate this okay 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 this this works uh. although it seems pretty unrealistic it would charge answer, fast McPherson. enough good God answer McPherson here. Help! Help me! The killers abducted me! Is that you, Hernandez? Calm down. Take a deep breath. Where are you? I've no idea. He's locked me up in an old house somewhere deep in the woods. He's going to kill me! He said he was after you too, McPherson. And mm -hmm. Hawker! But what about you? Are you okay? Are you hurt? Oh my god! I can hear him! He's coming back! What do I do? Fernandez, give me some clues about the place you're being held. Uh, a flyer? I found an old burnt flyer. For a store in Holton. Holton? That's the Arista County capital. Anything else? I saw some letters on a railway tie. The initials B-A-R. Those initials must refer to a railroad company. That's an excellent clue. I found a receipt. It's from a gas station in St. George. St. George? Isn't that in Quebec? Okay, Hernandez, that could help us. What else? Try to give me some clues. The more precise you are, the quicker we'll be able to find you. Let me think. There's a car outside? Hello? What's going on? Hello? Hernandez? All right, Garris, what we got? Tire tracks have been found nearby. They're being tested. The juiciest clue is the message on the answering machine. The door to the room wasn't forced, unlike the bathroom door. There's something different this time around. The killer went after Hernandez. She's connected to the case. It's not a coincidence. Here's the report you requested. It summarizes the main points of the investigation as well as the psychological profile you established. Thanks, Garris. All right, let's get to work. We have to gather as many clues as possible. Okay, let's read that report. Uh, I won't be there tomorrow. Kisses from Claire. Okay, I read all of those in the previous episode. The killer's case file. Uh, confidential. Assigned agents. McPherson, lead agent. Forrest Garris, assistant agent. James Hawker, end of assignment. July 18th, 2006. Opening and closure of the file. Opened on July 13th, 2006. Suspended on December 28th, 
2006, reopened on February, filed in progress, uh, type of crime, serial murders, uh, two series of murders committed on American territory, five murders in 2006 over a six month period, four mur murders in 2008 over a nine month period. It was established that the presumed suspect was the same in the two series of murders, causing the file to be reopened. The victim's bodies were found over a large geographic area, covering much of New England. All of the victims were young women between 19 and 27. No other apparent links. No serious suspect has been identified. Uh, victims. Dolores Wilkins. Body found on January 13th, 2006 near Wentworth, New Hampshire. 27 years old. The body bore traces of makeup, nail polish, li lipstick, eyeshadow. Joyce Dickinson, found on February 22, 2006, near Boston, Massachusetts, age 24, diabetic. Janet, Janet Connelly, body found on March 2, 2006, near New Haven, Connecticut, uh, 20 years old, gifted student, law degree. Uh, Dora Simon, Simon, body found on April 28, 2006, near Bangor, Maine. 22 years old, wears corrective lenses not found on the body. Olivia Wong, body found on June the 7th, 2006 near Salem, Massachusetts. 21 years old, actress. The killer mentions this fact in the video he sent to the, to the media and to the FBI. Uh, 2008 victims, Sally, Sally Duke, body found on February 29, 2008 near Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, 19 years old, wears a black wig, not found on the body. Susan Ghiarelli, found on April 15th, 2008, near Middlebury, Vermont. 26 year years old, red hair. Dorothy Lee, body found on July the 4th, 2008, near Scarborough, Maine. 23 years old, the period of the time between the victim's death, estimated by the coroner and the discovery of the body was unusually so short, less than two days. The delay noted for all the other victims was at least one week. Uh, Ellen Dunningham, body found, found on October 22, 2008, near Jackman, Maine, 20 years old, in-depth legal expertise ongoing. Um, okay, and those are all the bodies probably. Mm, autopsy reports. Uh, okay, actually I have to pause for a second, so I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back, so... Autopsy reports. Summary of the various autopsy reports conducted in the course of the 2006 and 2008 cases. Uh, referring coroner, Dr. Claire Ashby, uh, the cause of death is identical for all of the victims, a gunshot at close range to the forehead. The measurements of the wound indicated that the bullets were 9, nine mm. Uh, there are similar marks on the bodies, Marks left around the neck by a metal object, rope burn or restraining injuries at the wrists and ankles, minor non-lethal wounds caused by a variety of instruments distributed over the entire body, wounds were inflicted when, where the victims were still alive, a number of wounds led to significant, significant yet never lethal blood loss, burns were noted on the bodies, an analysis of those burns show that they were caused by repeated electrical shocks. The toxicological exams have revealed traces of toxins in the blood, substances that impair sensory and motor functions, of which uh, or which could cause paralysis of the limbs. The victims were not killed in the same places where their bodies were discovered, which in part explains the total absence of clues at the sites. The bodies were cleaned with water and chemical agents, clearly intended to confound evidence gathering. Killer's profile, established by Special Agent Victoria McPherson. Who is he? An adult male between 30 and 40. He is relatively tall with an average build. He moves and ex expresses himself calmly and with ease. The clothes. Since the killer records himself at work and sends the video to the media and the police, he has adopted an outfit that hides his face and changes the sound of his voice. Mm. Wearing the outfit also allows him to impress his victims, a mask, shiny black material, while maintaining a distance and power over them. The killer's nickname, the killer never identified himself, he has been dubbed the East Coast Killer by the media. This theatrical name was inspired by the movies sent by the killer and by his modus operandi. 
All his victims were discovered in New England, on the east coast of the United States. The killer seemed amused by this nickname, he has adopted it and mentioned it in some of his messages. Uh, personality traits a Methodical, manipulative, fetishistic, solitary uh, Motivation The killer tries to satisfy a desire for omnipotence, for absolute control. His actions are designed to accomplish this. Satisfying this fantasy of domination allows him to forget that he is incapable of having close relationships. Lacking empathy, he takes revenge on his victims, young women, who are in his mind temptresses. Uh, the killer spent his childhood in a rural environment, around a dysfunctional family. The father was absent, psychi psychically or... No, physically or psychologically. As a lonely child in constant conflict with his mother, he grew up in an isolated environment, watching a lot of TV. Left on his own, he took refu refuge in morbid and perverted imaginary world in which he remained a prisoner. He took pleasure in trapping and torturing wild animals, then domestic ones, and eventually leading him to envision new prey. Uh, now, how, how could you know that? Like, this is... M if you don't know who he is, uh, a lot of this is conjecture, to the point where it seems worthless to me, because you know you could you could make educated guesses about uh, his personality based on the videos, but how can you like how how do you know he watched a lot of TV? Maybe he played a lot of games, or maybe he played none of them, and his violent tendencies are because I don't know his father beat him. But maybe it wasn't even his father, maybe it was his mother. Like, where do they get all of those information if they don't know who he is? That's kind of dumb to me. Because, you know, uh, some, some of those things, uh, such as... Um, you know, having having troubled relationship with his parents uh, could be construed based on some clues on how he's behaving and how trauma usually develops in people. Uh, but but how can they know uh, that he he's started by torturing wild animals unless he like I don't know showed them that uh, that, that that is. Uh, stereotypic, stereotypically, uh, how uh, a lot of people with you know killers and people with serious violent tendencies uh, start. They start by tormenting animals and then then move on to people. That is why you know hurting animals is a red flag in in children uh, when it comes to developmental psychological problems. Um, but how can they know that? That he did that. That's kind of weird. Uh, modus operandi. He chooses his victim when his urges become too powerful. If he acts according to precise criteria, these have not been clearly identified. His victim is always a young woman of about 20 years of age. He abducts the victim when he she is alone, no witnesses, using an incapacitating drug. He takes the victim to a secure and isolated place. He is mobile, but does not use his vehicle as the venue for the killings. The killer owns a pickup type vehicle. He locks up his victim in an envir environment that he has specifically prepared. He humiliates, hum humiliates the victim, placing a collar around her neck. He weakens his victim by giving her drugs and tying her up. He then satisfies his thirst for domination by playing with the victim, hounding her, terrorizing her, making her go through a sick obstacle course, filming her the entire time. The sadistic game can last several days or even a week. The game ends when the killer has had enough of his victim. At this point, the killer tortures his victim once uh, one last time to take advantage of the spectacle of her agony and please. Then at the precise moment which he has pre-established, he, he kills her with a bullet to the forehead. After the death, he begins the cleaning process and preparation of the body. He edits his video footage to make a short film meant for the media and the police. He gets rid of the body, leaving it in a discreet spot. 
uh, probably far away from the spot where he commits his murders, the geographic area where the bodies were found covers several states. He sends copies of the movie to the media and the police, making sure not to leave any fingerprints, etc. He mails them to the town nearest to where he has disposed of the victim's body. Between murders, the killer plays the footage over and over. He is careful to keep the material keepsakes of his victims, clothes and hair, in order to relieve his crimes and satisfy his urges. Mm. In spite of his perversion, the killer demonstrates great intelligence and immen immense control. He is the perfect criminal who does not make mistakes, does not leave clues behind. His only Achilles heel is his madness, which pushes him to always do more, to act more quickly, which sooner, sooner or later will lead him to making a, a mistake. Okay, I think this episode has been long enough, so I'm going to save and end it for now. That's all for this one, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!